Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzwong TV here, aka G Lauren33. I'm back here today, and as always, it is time for your monthly Dragon Ball Super Manga chapter live reaction and review. I just woke up and you know, getting right into it. The chapter we've been waiting for for a month now, Vegeta versus Granola, is here. And you know, most of you guys, unless you've been living under a rock the last three days, you guys should know already. It was leaked all weekend. Everybody was talking about it. Vegeta has a new God of Destruction form. We don't have an official name for it. You know, uh, we don't know the official colors, but uh, the leaked images came out and Vegeta does have a new destruction form that he unlocks at the very end of of this chapter i did a video talking about my honest thoughts of it and i said that i didn't know how to feel but i'll be honest with you guys you know over the last couple of days i've seen so much so many incredible fan arts you know people doing their own versions of it and i'm getting i've gotten you know more used to the form i feel like the and I've, i also said in my other spoiler video i said that once we get manga chapter 75 and we get to see what this form entails, right? What kind of fighting style Vegeta has with it. And, uh, you know, we get to see it more in action. Then we can make more honest judgments about the form. But I am getting more used to seeing Vegeta without eyebrows. And the form is growing on me a little bit more. I still, Master Old Trinsic is still by far and away my favorite form in Dragon Ball. But, you know, I'm getting used to it. You know, slowly and slowly. It's just odd that we've never gotten to see Vegeta without eyebrows. That's the big thing here. We still don't even know the official colors. Even though, you know, a lot of people believe uh, that the, the form is either going to be purple hair or it's going to be black hair with, like, purple highlights. That's the most likely. And I'm hoping, because we have the DBS movie panel announcement later this week. Uh, we do have some other, we have Jump Carnival and some other anime festivals. I'm just hoping that, you know, we get some release from Torotaro or Toriyama. Just, to, just with, a, with, a, with a name, with an official name of the form and an official coloring of what the form actually looks like, right? Because, you know, I mean, I am getting a little bit tired of seeing one person post Vegeta's new form with black hair. Another person posting it with purple hair. You know, I would just like us to get an official coloring so... That everyone knows this is the way the form was intended to be designed, right? Right, but we'll talk about Vegeta's new form a little bit later, right? Because it takes place right here at the end of the chapter. But, uh, you know, this chapter is Vegeta versus Granola. And it looks like Vegeta versus Granola will be a two-chapter fight, just like Goku uh, and uh, Granola was. And I looked at social media before I started recording. Some people are saying they they felt that this battle was more intense than Goku and Granola. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but without wasting any more time, let's get into the chapter. Let's go. So as always, the first like eight pages we've already seen because of the early draft pages that we get about a week before the official chapter release. So of course we see the uh, the Sugar Railians. They are fleeing the city, right? You know, they, they want to flee the city until the explosives and the tremors die down. Because they know that, you know, so, some kind of earthquake is happening. But they don't realize that it's Granola fighting, you know, the Saiyans, of course. So we see uh, they escape the city. And, you know, all these panels we saw, like I said, in the early draft pages. But I do like how, you know, before the battle starts, Vegeta is talking to Granola. He wants Granola to realize that, hey... You know, we had nothing to do with Planet Serial's destruction. You, do you still really want to kill us? You know, just because of, you know, you're salty over what happened in the past. And I also love here how Vegeta actually circles Granola. You guys can see, right, Vegeta is walking around Granola as they're talking, you know, which is really cool. So Vegeta's like circling his opponent, trying to get him, trying to feel him out. So that's a, that's a little detail that some people will ignore, but I actually really do like. It gives you like that big fight feel, right? We had Goku versus Granola, which I'm not going to call it a warm-up because that's disrespectful to Goku, but... It was the first fight, right? And now we're getting the, the, the second fight, you know. Uh, but Vegeta says, you should know tricks like fusion and clones won't work uh, against me. And we'll spend a little time going through this dialogue because most of 
the rest of the chapter is just fighting, which, you know, we can get through really quickly. So, tricks like fusion and clones won't work against me. So, basically, that's what is saying, you know, I can use spirit fusion if you try to do that trick you tried on Kakarot. Uh, and Granola says, I use the clone to save my strength because my ultimate goal is to kill your boss, Frieza. And, of course, Vegeta reminds him, like, hey, Frieza's not my boss, but Granola's not having any of it. And even Oatmeal, who most of us believe is like an AI to Granola, kind of like how Jarvis was an AI to Tony Stark. Uh, it, you know, Gran uh, Oatmeal tells Granola, do you not find it strange, right? You know, the other saying, aka Goku, right? The other saying also asserted that he's not an evildoer. And Granola is still being stubborn, not realizing the truth is right in front of him. You know, Granola's like, they're just trying to save their own lives, right? They're just trying to keep me from killing them. And we know that Granola, he wants to kill Vegeta, but before he kills Vegeta, he wants to get the information out of him of where Frieza's location is, you know? Because remember, Granola doesn't want to waste any time. He only has three years left of his lifespan because he traded in his lifespan to gain the power of becoming the strongest, which that plot point, you know, will become big later on in the chapter. Uh, Vegeta's like, think what you want, but I was a child when the Saints invaded this planet. Had nothing to do with us. And Granola says, it doesn't matter. I want revenge on all Saints. So, and I like this. Vegeta's like, I expected as much. And if that's how you feel, then there's no reason to hold back. We see Vegeta power up in the Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. As always, we know that evolution of Vegeta in the manga is drawn differently than in the anime. But still, man, you know, I like I, I do like this panel. This is I, this is a cool panel of Vegeta powering up. And uh, a lot of people thought that we were going to see Vegeta, put, you know, have like a Goku approach to this battle. Right. You know how Goku always likes to he never goes full power at the beginning. He usually goes to Super Saiyan then God, then blue. Now he has Ultra Instinct on top of that. Vegeta is different. Vegeta, you know, usually goes full power from the start because he doesn't waste time. So a lot of people thought Vegeta was going to, you know, start off, you know, in maybe God or Super Saiyan and slowly power up. But he saw the battle between Goku and Granola. Why would he waste any time? He knows how strong Granola is. Why would he waste time trying to test him using his other forms, which aren't going to put a dent into him? You know, so we see Vegeta. He uses like his telekinesis power. Uh... To like break apart rocks surrounding the area and uses them uses the Hakai technique to uh, fire off uh, the fire them at Granola. So he takes like like different pieces of debris everywhere, and he you know they're they're small in you know size, but in quantity you know they can do a good amount of damage. So Granola notices right away with his right eye, and you can see a big explosion takes place. That everyone on the planet feels. You can see Goku. He's still knocked out. But Goku does wake up a little bit later in the chapter. Uh, so we see Granola. He appears behind Vegeta. This is really cool. You know. And I I, I like the way that Toritaro started this battle. You know. He's really grown with the way he choreographs his fight. This is really cool. So Granola says, I see. Your destructive, your destructive power is lacking. So you make up for it with quantity. Right. And Granola says, let me illustrate the gulf between us. And Granola uses his telekinesis to get a bigger rock, a bigger rock than because remember, Vegeta had a bunch of smaller rocks. But, you know, uh, Granola picks up a bigger rock and he says it flying at Vegeta using Hakai. So it is confirmed without a shadow of a doubt. Right. Granola does have Hakai. But the thing I will say is, especially now that we know that Vegeta has a new form. Granola's Hakai is not going to be on the level of Vegeta's, especially with the new transformation, because that transformation is centered around, you know, destructive power that he learned from Beerus, the god of destruction. So Granola may have Hakai, but it's not going to be on the same level of Vegeta's, especially now with the new transformation. Also, also, uh... Just had to fix the recording real quick. Anyway, and like back to what I was saying about destruction, right? Could that possibly mean that maybe Granola does have Ultra Instinct? 
Cause I know, you know, one of my friends named JD, uh, he's been telling me, oh, Granola has to have Ultra Instinct, especially if he has Hakai. You know, he has access to almost every technique that Goku, Vegeta, and everyone they faced, you know, uh, in, in, the, in the past. Granola should have access to all those techniques in his database. That's truly what, you know, the power of the strongest means. Not only having that power, but having the techniques to back up that power. So maybe Granola does have Ultra Instinct. But maybe it's not on the level of Goku's UI, since Goku has trained for that power and he has better use for the form. Maybe. You know, maybe. I don't know. But yes, it is now confirmed without a shadow of a doubt, Granola does have Hakai. So pretty cool stuff here. And I, like I said, I love how Granola says, your destructive power is lacking, so you make up for it with quantity. Well, I don't think he's going to need quantity in Chapter 75. But we see Granola hits Vegito with a huge uh, punch to the gut, right? And a lot of this chapter is just Granola beating down Vegeta. But the big thing about it is, even though Granola has the advantage for basically the entire chapter, Vegeta survives. Vegeta survives, and he uses his battle experience to keep the battle going. Which is, you know, near in the other part of this chapter, man. Like, I'll say this right now. This is probably the best Vegeta's been written in Super in a long, long time. Long time. You know, I love the way Vegeta's written in this chapter. And we'll talk about that more as we continue going through. But uh, you see, uh, right, like I said, Granola hits Vegeta with a huge punch, right? You can see Granola spits out a little bit of, or not Granola, Vegeta spits out a little bit of blood. But then, you know, Vegeta's not backing down. He hits Granola with a huge energy blast. Granola dodges it pretty easily. We see Vegeta dead. He powers up. He goes up into the air, punches and kicks, right? But like I said, Granola has the advantage. And this should not be a surprise to us. We know Super Saiyan Blue Evolution is powerful, right? But remember, Super Saiyan Blue Goku fought Granola last chapter. And even though it was a clone... Right? Even though it was a clone, Granola used a good amount of his energy on that clone. So, thing about it is, you know, you know, we know that Granola is super powerful, but we also know that Vegeta is uh, powerful as well. Hey, I'm getting old. I, I, I get so many... I get so many text messages, man, when I'm recording. Anyway. But yeah, we see Granola, he's pretty much owning Vegeta. And, you know, we, we kind of expected this. We expected this. We expected Vegeta to get owned for the most part here. And I said it. I've been saying it for months. Vegeta would get owned by Granola unless he had a new form coming. I knew that was, you know, I knew this was going to happen. There was no way Vegeta was going to have a really fair shot, especially when Goku went first. When Goku went first and Goku used his full power. He used Ultra Instinct. So there was no way Vegeta was going to have a fair shot against Granola using Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, especially when we had just seen Goku use a higher form of power, right? A higher form of power than Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. Talk about Ultra Instinct, of course, right? Goku used a higher form of power against Vegeta. I mean, against Granola. Right? There was no way Granola, who had already seen Master Ultra Instinct, that he was going to be intimidated by Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. So this doesn't surprise me at all. So we see Vegeta. He gets uh, thrown down into like a, a lake, right? Or no, a river. But we see, you know, Vegeta is uh, still standing tall, right? He's not backing down. And, you know, this is kind of... I like this Easter egg because, remember, we saw Vegeta training in the water... And the build-up to this fight. We saw him, you know, training uh, next to a waterfall on Beerus' planet. We also saw him training in an underground pool on the Heater Clan ship on the way to Planet Serial. While Goku, of course, was just eating. So, we see Granola comes flying at Vegeta. Vegeta is, you know, more on the defensive, right? Because Granola is so much more powerful that, you know, Granola is just unloading with punches and kick. And Vegeta is just really trying to survive. So you see, he uh, he hits uh, Vegeta with a huge uh, a huge double like a double axe handle shot to Vegeta's uh, face. Vegeta goes flying, 
Then Granola goes to his specialty. He does the uh, the key blast with, or the figure beam shots, right? And then Vegeta, once again, underwater. He's dodging them for the most part. And we see Vegeta's, you know, I, I, I love the choreography of this fight. Granola continuing to fire off the shots. Vegeta, you know, just flying underwater trying to get away. We see them nearing a waterfall, just like, you know, when Vegeta was training on Beerus' planet in a couple chapters ago. We see Vegeta, he ex he comes out from the water, right, right before the waterfall, and then he goes down below. He goes down below, right back underwater. Granola is continuing the fire shots, but we see that Vegeta was actually able to trick Granola. Granola was so busy trying to hit Vegeta with shots underwater, he didn't notice that Vegeta had actually gotten away. And you see, there's actually a good amount of distance between them. So Vegeta is able to get a little bit of a breather. But then we see, you know, Granola get angry. And then he, like, he gets in this, like, weird... It's like, it reminds me of Hawkeye from the Avengers. I, that's what I'm going to call it. Granola gets in a Hawkeye-like position, right? The only thing is missing here is a bow and arrow. I, I hope someone edits, like, a bow and arrow here. Because that would be hilarious. But we see Granola. He does this new move. And he asks his oatmeal for an aim assist. I don't know what the fuck is... Does Granola think he he's a sniper from Call of Duty? What do you think this is? Is this Warzone? What is Granola doing here? Right? This, you know, so this is a little bit weird, especially when we know Granola has that right eye, which is supposed to be the most accurate eye in the universe. It's just a little bit weird that Granola is, you know, asking for an aim assist. But, uh, but yeah, we see, uh, you know, Granola, he asks his oatmeal for an aim assist, and oatmeal tells him to be patient. He's like, not yet. Let him emerge into the lake where there are no obstacles. And you can see Granola is very patient and waiting. And right then, he sees Vegeta enter the lake, and he fires off the shot. Very accurate, and it does hit Vegeta, but Vegeta is able to, you know, uh, defend himself against it. So, really cool shots here. You know, and Granola's like, resisting? No, you have no chance. But it looks like Vegeta used Hakai. Well, I don't know if, he, if this is Vegeta using Hakai, but it looks like, you know, Vegeta looked, used Hakai to destroy the energy beam, right? And we see Vegeta, he comes back uh, up from under the water. Clearly, you know, he is fatigued because it took a lot of energy for him to block that shot. But Granola is surprised that Vegeta was able to survive the attack. So Granola is like, surprising. You people are far stronger than I expected. Talking about Goku Vegeta. Remember, Granola believes... Granola believes that Goku and Vegeta are the appetizers, the warm-up. Because Granola believes that, you know, Goku and Vegeta are working for Frieza. He believes Frieza is the big bad boss. And we all know Goku and Vegeta are pretty much league stronger than Frieza at this point in the manga. Unless Frieza has some kind of new form or new power and has been training since we last saw him in the Broly movie. Uh... But we see uh, Vegeta's like, you still sound awfully high and mighty about it. This, From this point on, I absolutely love this chapter, right? You guys know I am a Goku fan at the end of the day. Goku's my favorite character, but I love Vegeta. All respect to the prince, right? But yeah, like I said, from this point on, I love this chapter because this is where Vegeta's character is just written to perfection. I love this. And it also kind of pisses me off, you know... Uh, the way Goku's written in this chapter. Because Goku will be making an appearance here in just a little bit. So, uh, we see, you know, uh, Granola's like, this struggle is pointless. Because Granola, he's arrogant, right? He believes because he has the power of the strongest, there's nothing that Vegeta can do for him to win. And Vegeta admits, Vegeta says, I admit, at the moment, your strength and techniques surpass my own, but I'm still going to win, right? And Granola's like, I didn't, I don't follow, right? You know, you, you're admitting that I'm stronger than you, but, you know, you still think you're going to win? Granola does not realize that Saiyans, like Goku and Vegeta, are always training. And especially in battle, Goku and Vegeta get stronger the longer a battle goes on. It's part of their Saiyan DNA. We well, you know that about Broly as well. Saiyans get stronger, you know, the longer the battle goes on. They're known for rapid improvement. Uh, so, Granola's like, has that over-inflated ego, uh, <laughs> has that over-inflated ego left you unable to accept reality? It's almost sad. 
And Vegeta's like, stop, uh, stop yammering and keep fighting, Mr. Strongest. So I, I love that. Vegeta always with those little one-liners. You know, stop, lam stop yammering and keep fighting, Mr. Strongest. So we see our boy Goku, he wakes up. He wakes up. But this is kind of funny. You know, look. The reason why Goku is not dead, if this was Goku from DBZ, or maybe even very early on in Super, he would have died from that attack from Granoa. But Goku and Vegeta have gotten so strong that it takes a lot to actually kill them. It takes a lot. A blow like that would kill almost any other fighter that we've seen in the history of Dragon Ball. But Goku and Vegeta have gotten so strong, especially throughout Dragon Ball Super, that an attack like that will do a lot of damage to them, but they can survive. Look, we saw Moro impel Goku in the chest during the Moro arc. And Goku still didn't die right away. He fell unconscious. He was pretty close to death. But he still managed to survive enough that, you know, uh, that Dende was able to heal him. And the thing is, Goku, we seen Goku fight Goku Black with a hole in his chest. Like, it's ridiculous how much Goku and Vegeta can actually take at this point in Super. So, we see Goku, he does wake up, he notices the hole in his chest, and then he starts screaming. So, it's kind of like, you know, at first, when he wakes up, the adrenaline had, you know, completely wore off from his battle with Granola. So, it takes him, it's not until he sees the actual hole in his, in his chest, in his, you know, his gi, that he realizes what the hell happened. And he starts screaming in pain and agony. But he's still able to get up on his feet. Like, like I said, it's crazy. These guys can legit walk around with, you know, holes in their chest. Look, I don't think Goku can fight anymore, uh, you know. And remember, they only have one sense of being left. I don't think Goku could, you know, fight at all, you know, right now. Uh, As long as he has that hole, he needs, you know, some kind of medical attention. He needs to get healed somehow before he can get back in the fight. But for right now, you know, I think Goku's just going to be an observer. But we, we see, I really do like this shot. So as Goku, you know, he gets back on his feet. He sees Vegeta and uh, Granola f uh, fighting in the air. And I think, the, you know, the, the art here is really cool. A really cool pers perspective. Because you get to see this from Goku's standpoint, right? This is Goku seeing Vegeta and Granola fighting across the planet, across the mountains, right? So that's a really cool perspective, seeing what Goku is seeing. And it kind of reminds me of Dragon Ball Super Broly, that one scene, right, right before Vegeta turns Super Saiyan God, where Goku is, like, talking about, man, Broly's holding his own, even though he's only in base form. And then we see Vegeta and Granoa, or not Vegeta and Granoa, Vegeta and Broly, as they're fighting, you know, as they're fighting and they're flying right past Goku, you know, that's a really cool respect. So that's what this reminded me of. So pretty cool art here from Torotaro, getting to see the battle between Vegeta and Granola from Goku's perspective. So we see the fight continues on. This I didn't like, all right? I did not like. Look, even though Vegeta is written really well in this chapter, Goku, and even though we don't see much of Goku because this is about Vegeta and Granola, Goku sounds like an idiot here. And I, I tried, you know, a lot to defend Goku's writing in Super, but there's just times that I can't defend it. This is one of those cases. Goku says, and it's only one line, you know, Goku's back on his feet, and he says, Vegeta joined the fight? What the fuck were you expecting? I understand that Goku was knocked out for a couple minutes. He never, he didn't see Vegeta, you know, transform. He didn't see Vegeta and Granola in the beginning of the battle, because he was unconscious. But what were you expecting? You fought Granola first. Did you, did you expect Vegeta to come down and give Granola a sensu bean? Because we know that's something Goku might do. Because he's done it. Why the hell did Goku not expect Vegeta to be fighting? Did he expect, you know, Vegeta and Granola not to be best friends or something? And the magic for him to wake up and for them to make, uh, you know, to all be buddy-buddy all of a sudden? No. Like, come on, Goku. You know, like... I don't know why they have they wrote they wrote Goku to say something idiotic like that. I understand, you know, when it comes to Super, especially Dragon Ball Super, Goku's, you know, they kind of dumbed down Goku because the the, the pan, the you know, the pan more to the kids. But still, man, this is something that you just gotta think logically here. Goku and DBZ would never say something stupid like this. 
Goku's like, Vegeta joined the fight? Come on. When this gets animated, they gotta change that line. Because that's ridiculous. Uh, but that 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 pissed me off. But you know, uh, back to it. We see Granola, he sends uh Vegeta flying, right? Hits uh hits Vegeta with a kick. Vegeta gets back up and he fires a bunch of key blasts, but Granola uses Hakai to destroy the key blast. So that's really, really cool. But you know, we we see Granola use Hakai multiple times in this in just in this chapter alone. And we've seen him use it multiple times throughout the arc. And probably when Granola comes to Xenoverse 2, whenever that is, because it's gonna happen, right? Whenever Granola comes to Xenoverse 2 eventually, expect Granola to have some type of Hakai technique. Because he uses it enough for it's actually one of his signature abilities. But, you know, I expect in Chapter 75, with Vegeta showcasing his new form and his new power, I expect Vegeta to use Hakai on a level that we haven't yet seen in the Dragon Ball Super manga. So, it's all good seeing Granola use Hakai right now, but I'm expecting, you know, Vegeta to bring Hakai to a whole new level next chapter. I'm expecting greatness from Vegeta next chapter. <laughs> So, uh, Granola's like, you didn't really think that would work, did you? But, uh, Vegeta still is just continuing to fight and fight and fight. So, he fires off another key blast. Granola uses Hakai again to, uh, destroy the blast. Vegeta appears then behind Granola. And then Granola, you can see he's starting to get frustrated because, you know, Granola knows that Vegeta knows that Granola is stronger than him. But Vegeta will not quit. He will not give up. He keeps fighting. And I love that. Vegeta knows, even though right now, at this stage of the battle, he may not be stronger, but he's still going to keep going because he has a plan. And I love Vegeta's battle strategy here. So Granola fires off a key blast at Vegeta, and Vegeta dodges it, right? He dodges it confidently, and we see that the key blast actually hits the ruins of the city where Granola grew up. And you can see Granola's like, damn it, you know? He's angry at himself for letting, uh, for letting Vegeta kind of manipulate him into destroying the ruins of his home. Look at that, man. And it's not just a small explosion. A lot of the city was taken out in that blast. And we see Vegeta's like, hey, you're fine blowing up what's left of the city full of all those precious mem memories? So Vegeta, this is why, you know, people make the comparisons with Vegeta and Beerus. Vegeta and Beerus know how to get under their opponent's skin, right? Vegeta's being an asshole here because he's trying to get Granola worked up and angry. He wants Granola to be angry so that Granola can make an, a mistake and he can take advantage of it. So I love it. I love Vegeta's battle strategy here, man. And then Vegeta says, it just gets better and better. Vegeta says... I can tell, you know, that you only recently acquired this absurd strength, right? And Granola's taken aback by it. He's like, wait a minute, how the hell could you know, right, about, you know, my wish or how I got this power, right? Granola's like, how? How can you tell? And Vegeta's like, thank you for confirming. So Vegeta baited Granola into basically confirming that he had just acquired this strength recently. Because remember, Vegeta and Goku had never heard of Granola before this arc. Never. Because Granola was never a threat to them. He was never nowhere close to them in power. It wasn't until the wish was made, right? And we informed them that there's somebody out there, you know, that can challenge them, that can rival them, that, you know, they're like, oh, we got to face this guy, you know? So then Vegeta's like, you're clearly not used to your power. You are majorly lacking in the battle experience to back it up. So Vegeta knows that he's not stronger than Granola. But the thing that's keeping him in this fight is Vegeta has years and years and years of battle experience. Years. You know, from all his time in the Frieza Force to his time with the Dragon Team throughout Dragon Ball Super all the way to now. Vegeta's had thousands and thousands of battles, right? So almost there's not many things that Vegeta has not seen in, in, in a battle. So he could tell even though Granola is strong, he does have the battle experience to back up that power. And that's the reason why Vegeta was able to survive so long into this fight, knowing that Granola was much stronger than him. So I really do like that. And it also kind of reminds me of the Resurrection F movie. If you guys remember, the big reason why Frieza didn't win in that movie is even though when he initially gained the golden power, 
right? When he initially gained that power, he was stronger than Super Saiyan Blue, Goku, and Vegeta. But his body was not used to it because he went right down the earth to get his revenge on the Saiyans right after he had gained that form. If he had waited a little bit longer and trained and let his body get used to the golden form, not only would he have gotten even more powerful, but he would have been able to defeat Goku and Vegeta. So that's what this reminds me a lot of. Granoa may be the strongest, right? Especially when he made that wish. But he's, he didn't train at all, you know, to let his body get accustomed to that power. So, Vegeta says, what have you been up to since gaining this power? Have you put it to use with any training? And Granoa's like, training? No need. The same mistake that Frieza made, right? You can't just wish. And I've been saying this for months. For months since the, since Granola made that wish. Which I don't remember what chapter it was. Was it chapter like chapter 70, right? Ever since Granola made that wish in chapter 69 or 70, whenever it was, I've been saying Granola's good. The big mistake Granola made is not trading. Thinking that making a wish with the Dragon Balls, right? It may have made him the strongest in that moment in time. It may have made him moment it made him strongest at that time. But the thing about it is Goku and Vegeta, they never stop training. They're always looking to get better than they were the day before. They keep training. So maybe when Granoa made that wish, he was stronger than Goku and Vegeta at that moment. But since he didn't train and he just relied on having that power with all those techniques. Goku and Vegeta were able to catch it back up to Granola and surpass him, even though they hadn't met him at that point. So, Granola, right, he's still being stubborn, and he's still not, you know, willing to admit that he made a mistake. Granola hits Vegeta with a huge kick to the gut, and you can see Granola, uh, you know, Granola's like, witness the gap in our power and admit defeat sane. But Vegeta's like, need I repeat myself? You may be stronger, but that's no guaranteed that I'll lose to you. This is growth. This is true growth. Because we've seen Vegeta make the mistake so many times of him assuming that he's stronger than somebody just for that to backfire on him. The biggest example I can think of right away is the battle against Perfect Cell. Vegeta had the power, right? And he could have defeated Cell when Cell was in his second form. But he got too cocky. He let Cell gain or he let so absorb the androids, gain his perfect form, and then Vegeta still was not willing to admit that Cell was stronger than him. Right? Because Vegeta may have been stronger at that moment when he was facing second form Cell, but he let his cockiness and ego, because the battle wasn't over. He didn't, he didn't finish, he chose not to finish Cell off. He let the battle continue, he let Cell absorb the androids and gain his perfect form, and then Cell surpassed Vegeta. So you can see Vegeta has learned his lesson here, right? He knows that the tides of battle can change at any moment. And it's not smart to just assume just because someone's stronger right now that they're going to be stronger in the future. Especially knowing that Goku and Vegeta, as pure Saiyans, they get stronger and stronger as a battle goes on. So really good stuff here. So I love how Vegeta grabs Granola's leg and he tries to break it. And you can see, you know, Granola does feel a little bit here. He, you know, he didn't break it, right? Because we see Granola is able to kick Vegeta off him. But still, you know, Vegeta did do a good amount of damage there. So Granola kicks Vegeta and Vegeta goes back down to the ground. And uh, we see Granola says, this power I've gained makes me the strongest. It's a given that I'll win here today. Granoa once again being stubborn. He thinks that just because he has this power, it's a guarantee that he'll never lose, right? And Vegeta's like, I love this from Vegeta. He, Vegeta's like, huh, that's the great thing about a battle. The outcome is never quite set in stone. It's exactly what I love about fighting. And remember, Vegeta doesn't, you know, this is usually something. Goku's usually the guy who talks about his battle strategy. This is different. Vegeta usually thinks in his head. He doesn't think out loud. He usually doesn't reveal his inner thoughts to his opponent. But Vegeta's confident because he knows, you know, that Granola is, you know, just purely relying on the power he got from that wish. Right? That's what Granola is relying on. And Vegeta knows that, so he's confident in revealing his battle strategy. Because Granola doesn't understand that Vegeta and Goku get stronger the longer a battle goes on. So Granola is like, shut your mouth, barbarian. How many lives were sacrificed to your love of carnage? Right? 
So Vegeta's talking about his love of fighting, and it pisses Granola off because Granola partially believes that the Saiyan's love of fighting is what led to Planet Serial being destroyed all those years ago. So really cool dialogue here. I'm, I'm really enjoying the dialogue at the end of this chapter, or in the later stages of this chapter. But we see Granola and Vegeta, they keep going at it. Vegeta says, here's another tab it. Strongest, second strongest, rankings are well and good, but they only reflect a moment in time. Once that moment has passed by, it's nothing but history. Take me for instance, I'm already stronger than I was a few minutes ago. So Vegeta has learned, this is great character growth, man, because it's like Vegeta has learned from some of the mistakes he made in the past. He knows that, you know, the way you are at that moment once that moment has passed, it's the past. It's history. It's time to move on to the future. That's what makes Goku and Vegeta so great. They all never lack. They never, they never stop training. They're always ready to get stronger and stronger. They want to improve because they always know, hey, you know, the next opponent I face could be a deadly villain or could be my best friend. But I have no idea what to expect from them, so I have to be ready. So, I absolutely love Vegeta's mindset here, man. So, so uh, Vegeta's like, I've grown more and more powerful throughout this little dance of ours. So, and that is true. Vegeta is getting stronger. But we do know that Granola still has the advantage. And Granola says, good enough reason for me to finish you off now. So, we see Granola. He goes for uh, Vegeta's vital, sp uh, vital spot. And he actually lands it. He breaks part of Vegeta's armor. But uh, we see Vegeta is able to kind of lessen the damage. He does get hit because you guys can see Vegeta goes back to his base form and he coughs off a lot of blood. But if Granola was able to get the full force of this attack off, I'm willing to bet he may have actually killed Vegeta. He may have been able to actually kill Vegeta if he was able to fully land his blow with no resistance from Vegeta here. But this is a pretty awesome panel. I love this here. And this kind of pisses me off because why the fuck did Goku not do this? I Like I said, we all know that the reason why Goku lost last chapter was because he lowered his guard and Granola was able to take advantage of that. But still, it pisses me off that why couldn't Goku sense? It's Master Ultra Instinct. I don't care if his guard was dropped or not. Goku should have been able to sense Granola coming, right? And at least try to block Granola's attack. Granola was able to get right up to Goku and just, boom, hit, hit him in the chest. And then hit with a one-inch punch. Goku was defeated. Vegeta here, using a lesser form than Ultra Instinct, using Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. Yes, sure, Vegeta didn't has, Vegeta didn't have his guard drop, and he could kind of see it coming. Right? But still, still, it just pisses me off because Goku could have done something like this. And maybe he would have still lost, but it wouldn't have been to that extent. Because it really pisses me off that Goku, who was in Master Ultra Instinct, allowed Granola to catch him off guard. It just really bothers me here. You know, like, what we're seeing here, Goku should have done something like that. But still, we get some more awesome dialogue from Vegeta. Vegeta, yes, even though he is back into his base form and he looks like, right, he has been defeated. Vegeta says, what fun. This feeling, it's been ages. This is great stuff here. Granola's like, wait, what the fuck's going on, right? And uh, uh, Vegeta's like, there's no planet to protect. There's no people to save. Just me immersed in battle, my happy place. And this is what Saiyans love. Right? Most of the time when they're fighting, they're fighting because, you know, they're fighting for their lives or they're fighting, you know, to protect something. Especially Goku and Vegeta. You know, almost every battle they are, no matter if it's against Goku Black and Zamasu or uh, Moro or it's the tournament of power against Jiren, right? Most of the time when they're in battle, especially in Dragon Ball Super, they're fighting for their lives they're, or they're fighting to protect the Earth or they're fighting to protect their universe, right? Right now, you know, this is not this battle right now is not about protecting the universe. Yes, Gruno is trying to kill Goku and Vegeta, but it's, it's not a universal threat because Gruno is not saying he's going to destroy the Earth after killing Goku and Vegeta. He wants to kill Goku and Vegeta to get revenge on the Saiyans, right, for what they did to his people on Planet Serial a couple all those years ago, 
and then he wants to take out Frieza. This is not about the Earth being in danger. This is not about protecting Namek from Moro. This is just a battle. And yes, they could die, but at the end of the day, it's still a battle. So Vegeta's getting that joy of battle that he hasn't had in a long time. I love it. I love it. You know, Vegeta saying, what fun. This feeling, it's been ages. So great stuff here. I, I love this dialogue from Vegeta. And I love how Vegeta says, my happy place. Just the thing to get a battle craze Saiyan bloods pumping. And we all know Vegeta, he's all about that same, uh, same pride. I absolutely love this shot. I love it, man. Look at that gruesome. When I first saw this, I thought this was water. But no, this is actually Vegeta's veins, you know, coming out. Because Granoa hit him with such an immense shot. Look at that, man. So you see there's blood everywhere. And Vegeta's veins are popping up. Really awesome stuff here, man. I love it. I love it. And we'll see. Here's the thing. Right now, this is like a battle to Goku and Vegeta, right? But still, it could become a bigger thing, a bigger situation later on. But remember, we still have no idea what's going to happen with the Hero Clan. I still think at the end, Gas and Elec are going to end up being, you know, the big final battle here. And potentially Goku and Vegeta having the team over Granola to go up against the Heater Clan. And who knows? Frieza could still be out there somewhere. But still, man, really cool stuff here from Vegeta. And then, right, we saw a lot of this with the spoiler images this weekend. But we see Vegeta, he starts transforming. Really awesome stuff. So Vegeta starts powering up. And you can see, I love, look at, look how, look how large, look how enormous Vegeta's aura is here, man. Look at that. The, the flames of destruction energy everywhere, man. And it's going to look even more awesome when we get this fully colored. But I love the way this looks. So we see as the flames are up everywhere, we see gas. Gas had actually, uh, not gas, oil. Oil had actually, for, you know, lost track of where the battle had been taking place. We know he, we knew he had like that little telescope. But, you know, you know, the battle with Goku and Vegeta versus Granola has been taking place all over the mountains, all over the planet. They're, they're fighting at such high speeds that, you know, oil can't keep track of the battle. So Oil's like, now they're over there. They're taking this battle all over the map. And now v Goku, uh, Goku notices that Vegeta's key just changed. And he feels like God key to me. So Goku, you know, he is watching the battle, but he's watching it from afar. So he can't see Vegeta actually transforming. So I'm willing to bet next chapter, you know, at some point, Goku's going to get closer to the battle and to see Vegeta's new form uh, for his, you know... Uh, for his own eyes. Because he could sense that Vegeta's energy is changing. Right? Goku says. Feels like God key to me. But not just any God key. So it is God key. But it's a different type of God key. You know I saw someone on Twitter say. Is this divine God key? Well we know that it's, it has to do with the power of destruction. And I love the way it looks man. Woof. I just love the flame man. The flames look so cool. And I, we have no idea what color this is. We don't know if it's black or purple. But still, when we get this fully colored, it's going to look absolutely sick. So we see Granola. He's firing off a key blast, right? Because he's trying to hit Vegeta, but they're having absolutely no effect. You know? And he, Granola, you know, he actually looks concerned. He's like, what now? Like, what the, like, what the hell is happening? And then we see the flames start dissipating a little bit. We see Vegeta's body comes into focus. And Granola's like, what the hell happened to you? And just like we saw with the spoilers, Vegeta appears. No eyebrows. Lighter eyes similar to Ultra Instinct. You know, he has this uh, dark hair, which a lot of us believe is either black or purple. And then he has the flames uh, surrounding his aura. Vegeta has ascended his new god of destruction form we don't have an official you know name for this form yet but still man it looks absolutely fucking sick absolutely sick so uh vegeta appears and vegeta says a god of destruction taught me that power derived solely from instinct is unbounded so basically a rough translation for this is basically Power coming from instinct has no limits. That's an easy way to translate this. 
uh, for some of you guys who may not, you know, understand Unbounded. But there it is, Vegeta and his new form. We get it on the last page, and here it is, right? We Like I said, we don't have an official name for it yet. We don't have official colors for it yet. But, it, you know, the more I think of it, the more I get used to it, you know? I spent the last, like I said, I spent the last couple of days looking at all the fan arts of it. And the more I look at it, the more I, I actually, you know, I kind of like it. If it, it, It's different and it works for Vegeta. It's different for Vegeta. And, you know, it looks pretty cool. You know, I don't think it's better than Ultra Instinct. I don't even know if it, I don't even think it's stronger than Master Ultra Instinct. But for the most part, it still looks really cool. And it gets Vegeta Back in the conversation for potentially being, you know, the strong. Who's the strongest in Universe 7? But I love it. I love this new form. I, 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 love, I love this path of power. I'm going to be doing a video in the next couple of days talking about the two paths of power that Goku and Vegeta or the, that Goku and Vegeta have taken. Goku, of course, going more of the angel route and Vegeta going the god of destruction route. So make sure you guys look out for that video in the next couple of days. But... You know, chapter 75, it's a big one. It's a big one because Vegeta has already basically figured out what Granoa's strategy is. He's figured out the secret behind Granoa's power. The only thing Vegeta doesn't know is that Granoa used Dragon Balls, right? Because Goku and Vegeta don't know that there's Dragon Balls on Planet Serio. That's the only thing Vegeta hasn't been able to figure out. Vegeta know, was able to figure out that the heater could have manipulated them. He was able to figure out, like, the secret behind Granoa's power. Right? He was able to figure out who Granoa is and why he wants revenge on the Saiyans and Frieza. So now the pressure's on Vegeta to absolutely deliver next chapter, and I think he is going to. I expect chapter 75 to kind of be the kind of be of Vegeta's version of chapter 64. You guys know manga chapter 64 is my favorite manga chapter, right? That's the chapter where Goku uh, unlocks uh, Silver UI, Master Ultra Instinct, and he absolutely beats down Moro for that entire chapter. I feel like that's what we're going to get with Vegeta in Chapter 75. I expect it to be a beatdown, and I do think Vegeta will be very close to defeating Granola. He probably will defeat Granola. He won't kill him, but that's when something will interrupt the fight. Either Vegeta may lose the form because he's not yet fully used to it and he hasn't mastered it, or maybe the Heater Clan or Frieza, somebody will come in and interrupt the fight. But I do uh, expect Vegeta to, you know, absolutely beat Granola down. You know, the pressure is on. Vegeta must deliver. They did a fantastic job writing Vegeta in this manga chapter. Great job with Vegeta's writing. Goku's writing pissed me off. They need, the, and I'm probably going to make a video, probably talk about how they need to stop making Goku like such a fucking idiot. They need to stop writing Goku like such a fucking retard in Dragon Ball Super. But still, uh, Vegeta's new form is here. And, then, you know, Chapter 75, it's going to be a much anticipated chapter. A very anticipated chapter. And I cannot wait to see what happens. But let me know what you guys thought. This was a great chapter to me. This was a really good chapter. Uh, this was probably the best I believe Vegeta's been written in Dragon Ball Super. But let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below other than that guys that's about all i got for you guys today thank you guys for the love and support if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like on it subscribe if you guys are new to the channel hit the bell right next to my name fits tv so you guys are notified every time i post a new video i'm gonna get out of here you guys stay safe and healthy y'all peace